In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a beginner's guide to Smartsheet. Now, Smartsheet is a work management platform and it's going to help you to streamline a ton of processes and make everything a lot easier. So first things first, once we've gone ahead and signed up for an account, we're going to be brought to a page that looks a little bit like this. And this is going to be the suggested for you tab. This basically shows you different uh, templates you can use for your company. Now, what I would recommend doing is going to the bottom left hand side and clicking on the plus icon here, which is create. And this is going to give you a load more templates. So you can go ahead here and actually select the different niches or different uh, yeah, niches that you're in. So we can go ahead and just put all templates. And right here, we're going to see tons of different templates. And it really depends what your business is, depending on which one you choose. So let's say we're going to have a company management one here. We can view all different company management templates. And let's say we want to go for a task list by priority, which is quite a common one people would use. We'd click on it here and then we can click create from template. And that should load up into a page that looks like this. So on the left hand side, you're going to see this is this folder here is the um, the whole sheet as a whole. And then we've got the different sub sheets that are inside this. And then we have the summary dashboard, which is basically the one you're going to be able to share. So first of all, we can see list by priority. We're able to go into here and click on anything here, sort of like a spreadsheet or like a Google sheet and just double click on anything. We can change anything there. We can change the priorities. We can change the things here. But if we wanted to go ahead and add a row, we could go ahead and do that. We can also go ahead here and edit one of these, so edit any of these tabs here that we want to. Now if we want to go ahead and actually add an item to the to-do list, we would go ahead and do it here on the to-do list section. First of all in here we'd write the name of the item, so we could put um, compile invoices, put some notes here if we want to, um, under $100. We can have the complete tab here, so if we complete it we can tick it. And in here we've got the drop down for the priority, so we'll say high priority. And then we can just have the date here if we want to. So now if we go and save that, if we go back to the summary dashboard, we can see here it's now updated and we've got compile invoices under $100 here at the bottom of this one here like that. We can also go here and it should show up on these ones and these ones here. So it's pretty simple like that. Now what we can go ahead and do if we're going to be presenting this, something like that, we can go to the top right here and there's a presentation button which will make it full screen and it will make it easy for you to present it to people and there's quite a lot of different graphs and stuff like that which make it cool and you can also click on the different lists from there you can also go ahead and share this and sharing it's pretty simple you can just put their email in here you can select their uh, permissions on it so they can be an admin all of those kind of ones there. You can put a little bit of a message, so this will be the email they get. Or you can just go ahead and copy a link, and you can send a link to someone, and it will go to this here. So that's quite cool. So we can go back here to the Create section, and as I said earlier, there are tons of different templates you can pick from, and the complexity of them is shown at the bottom. So the ones that are more complex will be a little bit harder to deal with, and I'd recommend sticking with the simpler ones to start with. But if we go and look at something like this here, this is a high complexity one. I can create it from template and it's going to take a little bit longer to load just because there's more data inside of it. And you can see this one, it's the same format, but there's just a ton more features or a ton more different um, files and stuff. So we've got stuff like pending contracts, which we can you know, go ahead and look at. We've got the contract intake. So this is where we can basically go ahead and actually add contracts. Just like this, we can add the users. We can add the date, description, all of that. And this is going to go back into the overview here, and just like this. And, and for things like vendors, we can go ahead and add new vendors inside of here. Um, 
all that kind of stuff you, you can go in and edit and you can change the vendors change who it's assigned to all of this kind of stuff in here but this is just a lot more of an in-depth one but again the same principles apply next we're going to go ahead and do is we can go to these work apps section and work apps I have none installed here but essentially this is going to be different apps that you have that are integrated in now to go ahead and actually create a work app we want to go down to the create option again and we're going to click create new and down here you can see there's a button here that says work app so we can create a work app and that's basically going to be an app that people can use inside of their sheets now when we're starting from fresh on the create new we can also create a sheet a form a report a dashboard if I show you how to create a form here, we can type a title in, form one. And it will take a second to load in, but it's a pretty simple uh, builder here. We can click on here and we can change the title. So we can say application. We can add some description text here. We can change the colors quite easily. Then fill, this is the field. So we've got field one here. So we can go ahead here, add a label, so we could put something like name, help text. This is going to be the text underneath it, so we can say insert your name. We can put it required, we can hide it if we want to. Um, we can select the validation, and we can select what kind of box it is. Is it a multi-line or single? And then the default value is going to be the text that's inside it, so we could just put something like a placeholder. And then we can add logic if we want to. So when name contains something, then show the following field. So maybe if you have a button that's like, yes, you can have another field that's like explain more or something like that. So you can go ahead and add that, it's quite useful. If you look on the left hand side here, we've got the new field section. So you can go ahead and add tons of different fields here. So you've got all of these ones that we can add to it and uh, yeah you can add these here so it really makes it very customizable and then you can click open here and it's going to show you the form that we've just created and they can submit it if we go to settings there's going to be some um, sort of theme settings you can turn on a capture so that people don't spam it and you can save that you can also share the form if you want to via email, link or embed. So it's pretty useful and easy to go ahead and use. Now something I'd recommend having a look at is your profile here. First things first is we've got user management. So we can go ahead here and press add user. And this is where we can go ahead and add someone to our account. Um, if we press add users, you can put their email in, their first name, last name. This is where you can add basically our employees, stuff like that. We can group them up which is very useful. We've also got another section down here, which is the apps and integrations. So we can go ahead and integrate some apps in here if we'd like to. By default, they've got data shuffle, which is basically a data transferring system. So you don't have to do it manually. And then down here, we can actually get ourselves an API token if we have a specific use for that. So we can click generate new access token and that should generate the token for you. Now one more thing to look at is the pricing. By default, you're gonna have quite limited access to Smartsheet, but if you go ahead and get a pro license, you're gonna be able to add people to it. You've got limited sheets, you've got a lot of storage. And then if you go ahead and do the business one, you've got basically unlimited everything and you've got automations as well. So that's a really, really good feature. But if you go onto their pricing page here, you can go ahead and actually see all the different features you get for the different pricings. And there's a lot of different things you actually get with this. So it's very useful, especially if you have a business that needs this. So that's basically a full beginner's guide to how to use it. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, be sure to like, subscribe and comment down below that it helped. Thank you for watching.